to be uh, so the first thing that I would like to show you today is, uh, let me share uh, my screen. Uh, as, as this, uh, I'm going to add it. Uh, it's this kind of a diagram. It's a bit different than others. And it's not much about, uh, uh, wait, because it's too many. Uh, it's not much about, uh, the problems we have, but about the uh, workflow, we organize to work on those problems. So we uh, mainly we have uh, identified uh, three big domains. Uh, it's the domain of uh, data, data domains. So uh, all possible versions of, of our data frames, etc., with all possible notations, we will have uh, people work like small teams working on it, depending on a specific task. So each in like those small groups, two or three persons will be not uh, something that will endure for a couple of weeks. Uh, those group will be only like mini tasks um, specific. So once the task uh, is done, uh, those different individuals uh, in a group can go to different tasks. Uh, and so it's a data domain. Then we have uh, this, this back-end tools domain, so all possible filters or, or visual, visualization or notebooks, uh, stuff that uh, we are doing uh, here. Uh, we will have something like two, three groups uh, working uh, on different subsequent uh, uh, tasks coming either from the data domain. So for instance, when we need to uh, um, somehow rebuild our data frame or uh, build a new version of data uh, based on specific requirement. And then we have also front end domain. And front end domain will, uh, people working in front end domain uh, will do stuff both for data and for tools. So that, for instance, persons who uh, who are not coders professionally, they cannot code, but they're, they're a speci specialists in biology, medicine, whatever, and they uh, need some um, more um, sophisticated uh, look at data, or they need also, like, also for annotation. So everything what will be in uh, front end, uh, front end related, will land uh, actually in, in this huge, um, cloud, let's say, or bulb, or how to call it. Uh, yes, and in, generally speaking, it's the, the, the main idea I, I would like to uh, organize our workflow. And of course, no one is like enslaved or, or uh, uh, bound to just one of uh, those three domains. Uh, persons with different skills uh, can uh, skip over and uh, and uh, yeah, and uh, work together with different per persons on different tasks in different domains. But at once, they should be uh, just in one subgroup on one task, so that uh, we we don't uh, overwork uh, each other. Questions? Makes that, sense. That okay? It's like somebody has some critical. Uh, yeah, I thank you, uh, but somebody has some more critical uh, uh, opinion on that. Yeah, um, what is the vision about integration of everything in one uh, big pipeline? How do you see it? So integration of what? Uh, so like, like you have small tasks in backend uh, and you want to actually to integrate everything and uh, run in, in uh, our infrastructure. What is your workflow? How people should do that? Uh, like, hmm. yeah, that's a good question. So um, just to elaborate a, li a little bit. Um, so I'm from research and innovation and actually uh, our work from one side is to produce a proof of concept. So something working, prototypes. And uh, from other side, there is a team that actually does production stuff. So they are taking care about security, high load, and uh, this kind of stuff. So continuous integration, whatever. And how do you see it in, in this uh, workflow? 
so I so I think it would be more like uh, intersection between uh, between a uh, data domain and and uh, like uh, backend tools because it doesn't need I mean I once you for instance you have uh, wait because it's very uh, uneasy to navigate here uh, once uh, once you have when you have you have some tools producing new versions of data here and of course it's like more uh, data oriented uh, tool then uh, actually the result of this uh, product here will go back to uh, to uh, data domain then the, the problem that that i had uh, with like the splitting this in front and the back end is more or less obvious but we have also this uh, like backend tools that produce a certain kind of new data and uh, actually it's okay it's 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 more I split it but of course there are things there are topics where actually data domain will be backend domain uh, at the same time they will be merged and it's not like strict uh, strict uh, um, division it's just uh, let's say in, in, in general idea that uh, are more data domain related uh, tasks. So for instance, maintenance of V9, V10, V12, whatever it will be. And they are not much like V9 is just, uh, and for, of course for V9, when we have V10 or V11, and we need just once again, go through all data frames and uh, add new columns or uh, new rows because we will have new uh, subset of papers and we need to annotate them uh, in the same in the same way as other all other data uh, are already annotated it's more like data domain uh, um, thing because we 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 did it already so we don't need to develop new new tools or new library or to integrate new libraries so uh, in this regard i would say it's this division is like this uh, uh there more or less some some generalization it doesn't mean that uh, one task cannot be actually shared between uh, those two domains and is being done by one team working on the same time on some on on this task mm -hmm. so if i understand correctly uh, for like data domain you will have um, people that work in these notebooks and they'll produce some new data and uh, workflow basically should be packaged and executed somewhere on the cloud because we are talking about big data probably hundreds of uh, gigabytes should be processed so who is doing who who is going to do this uh, work like uh, if it's more like data domain people however i can also imagine that uh, in one group the one subtask uh, group like two or three persons we have somebody with more data domain knowledge and somebody is just writing a notebook and then we can they can together like figure out okay i am doing this notebook but then we, we need to uh, to uh, carry out in in the cloud so we have uh, another person in the group uh, who uh, can work on that so okay. that Okay, so uh, from my experience, it, it will not work in this way because usually people that uh, creating uh, Jupyter notebooks, they're different people from running okay. something on the cloud. Okay. So you have to think how actually to merge two different activities. And this is basically the challenge of innovation. You can produce whatever you want. You, will, you, you can produce any workflow, but how to actually to execute it in secure and reliable way and to produce expected result, this is something to consider, basically. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. As I, then I need to. I mean, if you, if anyone of you have uh, like uh, an opinion to voice on it, uh, I, I, I would like to hear it, because uh, yeah, that's that can be a problem that we have. Uh, like to write a notebook is not a problem then to scale this notebook or if this uh, notebook is uh, too complex i mean like in python it's very easy to put 10 different libraries but then to run those libraries on gigabytes of data in some reliable amount of time uh, uh, it's like foreseeable uh, time uh, amount of time and uh, um from my experience and uh 
I'm working for decades in uh, academic field, but usually we have like maintenance team and they're taking care about all this uh, Kubernetes cloud stuff. And uh, actually, um, if something is already established, it's really difficult to change usually. This is something okay. to think about that. Okay, so, okay, I, I, I need to reflect on, and maybe Anton, do you have something, two cents to put in? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure I have something to put into this picture, but like I, I definitely feel the hardness of the question that Slava just asked, because yeah. this is, again, if you find a good formula for that, that will be like revolutionizing the whole industry of data science slash productionizing ML, etc. Uh, but again, we'll need to try. Okay. So, uh, maybe it was. It will be like mm -hmm, make one version is like okay. We have guys here producing a notebook, uh, doing whatever in Jupiter, and then we have another team who need just to take 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 care of everything with us, like to translate this notebook into some scalable solution in in the cloud. And uh, it's not actually not their business how it will work in the uh, in the cloud. And uh, yeah. Can I? Can I ask a question? Just sure, about sure. That? It seems like you, you did this already in a way with the work that Brandon did, right? It's just yeah. that we're sort of exposing it as a service here, which is really all we want, is the ability to access services and pick different services independent of the data. This is exactly why I came with the idea to build a common data infrastructure first because uh -huh. all, all these pipelines should be reproducible. And uh, basically this is kind of commons that every uh, task uh, has in this project. So yeah, if, if there are new uh, pipelines will be built, my interest only to have everything running in, in, in the common data infrastructure and this is a way how we can make it probably to run in production in the future. I don't think anybody is disagreeing with that, really. It's just that we then expose them as services that other people can see. I think we all agree that it should go on the, the common data structure. It's just that we conceptually think of it as there's data and then there are these services on top of them. Yeah, but, but uh, if you want actually to enrich uh, data with new, um, I don't know, with new ontologies or something else, uh, of course, um, it will be difficult to repeat the same experiment uh, if you have like hundreds of uh, hundreds of uh, gigabytes. So we have to think about continuous integration process that can uh, grab data and after to build all software, uh, to build all Docker images, run Docker images, and after to run everything in the cloud. And first to test with like sample data set. Uh, to see if everything that will be produced by this process will be corresponding to uh, what is expected and after to run the same on big data set. Yeah, I guess I, I was never really thinking that we were going to be introducing new individual ontologies on, on the fly on an ongoing basis. But like, let's take the example that Kevin is working on right now. There, there's no reason that we we can't as a group pick a few ontologies that are valuable to everybody and then integrate that in on top of the infrastructure. Is that true? Yeah, that's true. It should be reproducible. Okay. Yeah. So I don't think anybody is asking for we, that anybody should be able to come in and write a notebook and bring in whatever ontology they want and that we just expect it to work on the, because there, there are impacts to that, right? It's a whole new set of um, searches that need to be done like you said lots of data that needs to be stored in different places so yeah i i think you're you're thinking we're asking for more than we are okay so yeah so uh i need to like i, I I'm, I'm going to try to to be more specific on things that slava mentioned uh how, how to deal with it uh, but yeah like uh, please look at this as a kind of general scheme it's really a kind of a overview in terms of a workflow that we, because I need, it's also um, in terms of let like HR 
personal management. I have people uh, being very uh, like having a lot of experience in front end and not much experience in, with uh, Jupyter notebooks, but wanting also to contribute in Jupyter notebooks. So for uh, for instance, uh, those persons can also uh, then skip over to some uh, like less complex uh, tasks uh, in 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 this front uh, backend uh, domain and vice versa. I mean, like. I have persons uh, with heavy domain, like data science background, but wanting also to learn something in front end. So depending on the specific task in the specific time, uh, they can also uh, migrate between those domains. So those domains are also like, they're not strict in the sense that, uh, and very often it's like, we, we need, we will probably need to some uh, new uh, front end tools doing things that actually demanded by high-end users like virusologists, biologists, et cetera, but we won't have actually at hand a solution at the level of backend. So yeah, so it will be a, a, a little bit movement between uh, uh, among those three, uh, let's say three domains. If the teams are bringing you their requirements like if the teams are sort of saying these are the things we need and then backend tools development is going hand in hand with what you're doing right Th then it it works yeah is that true Slava? Yeah. do you agree with that it's more just if 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 users end users are suddenly bringing in a ton of new ontologies or something or expecting they can bring in that's where it becomes unscalable but if if as a group the teams are telling us in advance, these are the ontologies we need, this is what we need, how we need it to work. Then that all gets built into backend tools and data infrastructure together. Yes, that's right. And yeah. I have an additional question for Lukas. Yep. Just about this connection between, between uh, front end and back end. Yep. How, how do you see it? Um, I can think about some microservices that should be exposed on backend side and people from front end should be able to build tools. Yeah, uh, that's a good question because I'm completely not, uh, we have, I have no expertise on that. I, I know just uh, like I can imagine myself that it's like a problem that uh, of course we, um, front end between data domain and, and um, uh, for, like the relation between front end and uh, data domain is obvious. But now it's like uh, somebody being uh, no coder, uh, a person who just wants to use one of the tools we have in the form of the notebook, wants actually to use it, but on in a kind of a search or wizard or search machine uh, on the front end. And now it's the, I, the question, how can we, how those uh, notebooks can be translated into uh, some, uh, front-end devices. For instance, uh, to, to, to be more specific, like we have a tax summarization um, uh, models uh, and we want to summarize some abstracts. So uh, in a front-end, it would be from the perspective of the front-end, it's just like, like I have a results from some papers and I, I can uh, uh, choose whatever I want to summarize together. And then, of course, uh, abstracts or some fra paper fragments, depending on the uh, different options, will be put, uh, will be, uh, put back into uh, the, this language model for summarization. And then uh, the summarization of those uh, papers or abstracts will be rendered here in the front end. Does it make sense? Why do you need front end in this case? You can do exactly the same with notebook. Yeah, but I, I, yeah, but my like my image like mm, mm, uh, the situation is that we have a person who cannot code in Python. No, but but a uh, usual way how to actually execute projects where uh, you have uh, humanities uh, people and people from computer science, you can couple them, and uh, one person can program what a person with domain knowledge actually is telling to do. Uh, mm. Okay. We could, could build a very quick front end, actually. I don't think that that's a huge hurdle. 
It could, it could be a really simple dashboard, for instance. Yeah, yeah. something like that. This is even the front end and not in Java, but exactly in yeah, dashboard. Even in Python, or you can you can use some you can use Kibana maybe. I think it can be quick. Um, just some. Okay. Oh, like, so it's just experimental stuff that should be not in production after some time. Well, that that depends, I think, right? I I mean, if it's hacky, then no, but it could be in production if it's depends what we mean by production, right? If it's an internal tool for us, but there's stakeholders that are not technical, then we could give them a very simple um, dashboard that's that they can actually use, and then I would consider that production still. Kind mm -hmm. of what, what we mean, but there's definitely ways to expose this other than a notebook. So what I mean is no code ways to expose it. Yeah. We need to talk about what that means. I, I don't know, but, but we can. And agree that we can achieve this on the backend side with, with microservices. That's, that's what I like. Can yeah, but, okay, but you know, the problem, for example, data frame that everybody is using is not suitable for production because uh, it's uh, it has very high uh, consume of memory and uh, yeah. slow yeah. Um, performance. It doesn't, it doesn't need to be a data frame, right? But how we implement it in the backend and how the backend serves it to whatever front end. That's, up to us but this is exactly what i'm saying usually in research project you, you have time only for prototyping and it should be some additional resource actually to put action in production to create a data model and uh, probably probably to put in different database already scalable and ready for production so it's something completely different to what to uh, research uh, activities. Yeah, no, exactly. But I'm not saying research. I'm just saying the front end can be very easy. Mm. Okay, maybe, okay, okay. To, find a, to find a bridge between it, it's like maybe we can use here some uh, very simple, uh, by front end, we can mean both things. I mean, like uh, a full scale front end, uh, scalable, etc. And also front end with some primitive dashboards just to, uh, to let people being no coders to use some services and once if a certain service or tool from uh, backend uh, will uh, be popular or would like the demand for it will be high then we can think how we can scale it i mean how we can translate the this no jupiter based uh, solution with primitive uh, dashboard into something scalable so do once it, sorry so do I don't want to cut you off. If, um, go on. I'll ask my questions when you when you're done. Yeah, yeah. So yes, that's my idea. Okay. Do we do we know what the stakeholders are here? Actually, do we know who wants what? Because there's uh, be confusion about what actually should show up to to whom, right? If we know this, then it's it's clearer. But but who's, actually going, who's actually going to use the front end? Yeah, uh, front end. Yeah, that's the good question. I mean, like the. I mean, the the, the worst case scenario is somebody who Ooh. cannot code, but uh, wants to use uh, our databases, uh, our findings. Uh, uh, want uh, wants to um, to deep uh, to di wants to dive uh, into different uh, uh, collections of data and explore them. Okay, Lukas, uh, can I ask you something? Yeah, sure. So, uh, in this vision, do you have people actually that able able to execute it? Like to build front-end tools, back-end tools, and... Uh, I have a front, uh, for front-end, I have already two. Uh, I have uh, Justin, I have uh, Dylan, and I have somebody else. Like, mm -hmm. something like three persons. Uh, for backend tools domain, I have also three persons at least now, uh, and I'm. But I'm. I, I didn't check everyone on our list. It's like 50 persons, and I, 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 I messaged already 20 something like that. Uh, and uh, domain, there's also two, three persons uh, that already mentioned that they work with you. I, I don't recall the names, but there are people uh, working on Dataverse and uh, uh, also on. Yeah, I like Matthew. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 So it's like now it's like two, three persons at least for each domain. Um, just I don't know if you are uh, considering my advices, but yeah, sure, sure. I mean, like it would be nice to ask them uh, what actually they can, uh, they want to get from this project before you will start to do something like that. Because okay. 
because it sounds a bit ambitious. Yeah, we, uh, Corona Y at all is quite ambitious <laughs> in, in Denver. So, uh, <laughs> and no, I, I, okay, it's, it's, I know it's complex, but actually from it was my reflection, like a kind of a general vision from uh, last uh, calls that that was where we are going to build. If, it, if, if we want front end, then do it, we, need, we need some like front end for everyone in the sense that it's not just a bunch of notebooks. It should be also uh, be available for no coders or at least some options, some, some facilities. Again, then it's, that can mean many things, right? Does it mean it should be exposed publicly? Then the bar is much higher than actually having it only exposed within Corona Y, but people who can't code, right? So we need to understand those requirements. Uh, front end can mean you put web devs on it, you put business intelligence people on it, you put Python coders on it. There's tons of different ways to achieve a front end. Okay. So if I could just share something, I feel like we might be having a couple of different conversations here while we wind down. So. I know there is definitely a lot of ambiguity about what front end could mean. And I think a lot of that as, ex as services are exposed as microservices and on the back end, um, fulfilling requirements on the front end is an incredibly difficult thing to do. Um, what Slava is more talking about is the difference between initial development and bringing those things into the pipeline into production solutions. Instead of having one person who develops an idea and then figures out how to integrate that into the, great, the bigger ecosystem, have somebody focused on doing those integrations into the pipeline. Yeah, I thought, I thought those were, I mean, those are different conversations. I thought the last one you mentioned was already done and we're talking about just the former, but. I think that was, is that not what you're referring to, Slava? Yeah, this is exactly correct, and this is my concern at the moment. So Slav is concerned that we don't have anybody set aside to worry about moving things into production. Who's going to focus on how it's implemented in Docker? Who's going to focus on, you know, load and making, you know, sort of the DevOps side of things, I think is what yeah. Slav is concerned about. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's a separate conversation as far as I'm yeah. concerned. But, um, but uh, uh, what do you think, guys? Um, I don't want to interfere, actually, in, in the process of development. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm doing things on, on common data infrastructure, so I can just simply uh, kind of uh, watch what's going on and uh, not to interfere, but uh, just ask some questions if it's necessary. But I don't know. I think, personally, I, I, I kind of agree with you, Slava. Um, and I think maybe a solution is, within each of these work groups, at least, at the very least, have somebody who sort of point on integration, you know? One person who, for that domain, focuses on how do we move this into the bigger ecosystem while the other people focus more on prototyping. Or have one domain entirely that focuses on integration. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or so, so like, metaphor, metaphor, like, as a metaphor of somebody, standing actually here somewhere uh, or connecting those uh, works of different domains in terms of integration. There should be people in those arrows. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean like yeah, something arrows. like that. Oh, oh no, sorry. Oh, yeah, something actually, like that. I have a slightly quick related question. Um, yeah. we, at the moment there's only guy one, two and three, but does this also entail some kind of hierarchy where we have an owner of each domain, or at least one owner? Uh, okay, uh, because you're going to be a Scrum master, if, I, uh, if I'm correct, yes? Or well, some... if, we, if we're using Scrum, I, I can, I guess, but that's not what I mean. What I mean yeah. is that... Yeah, actually, it, it would be uh, like a very rational and, 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 and uh, self-evident uh, step to establish a person who uh, takes uh, care of an, a kind of overview, shaping overview mm -hmm. on each of those domains and communicate uh, like uh, developments or in, in those domains to other, uh, to, to people to, uh, from, to, other, to people in other domains. Uh, Lukas, uh, you know, I, I, I almost have, have to go, but what I can say, uh, you are missing all uh, possible stakeholders from all tasks. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
Yeah, I was going to point that out too. And then just to finish this off, um, not just a communicator, but actually kind of like a team lead, right? Someone who actually organizes what happens within each domain. I think that okay. would be. Okay. Yeah, it's okay, but I mean, it's very valuable. Uh, thank you. I would also add to this, not just like team lead, we need tech team leads, right? Like people who actually like focused on implementation not just like this coordination part yeah right so in a sense again yeah. since we have only like two three people in each domain like again it's i think it's too early to talk about like lead of this or that like domain etc because it's just again two three people well, in each group three but eventually group. like i think we will have like this to merge people with uh, enough expertise for domain specific stuff all right data all of that that you know we could call them like team leads etc but right now you essentially need you know implementation well I mean, team lead doesn't doesn't mean being hands off right it, what i meant is someone who's just as hands on as the rest but is kind of the guy who organizes it within the domain and leads rather than this being self organizing yeah yeah, I mean, I'm just adding, like, Alex, you, what you were saying is absolutely correct. I'm just kind of gotcha. focusing the scope of what, what leads are we looking for right now at this stage of the game. Yeah. Cool. Um, guys, I also have to shoot off now, um, but um, okay. I'll be with that. I mean, okay, thank you. And, uh, yeah, and we will hear. Uh, yeah, thanks, Lucas. Uh, later. Great. Uh, thank you. Thanks, Alex. Alex. Uh, okay, we, we are closing this session because we have already... Uh, like Delon, Anton, and Christine. Do you have some questions on, on the top of that? Uh, or something else to, to ask for? Well, I think I think it's pretty clear. It's just uh, from like a team testing perspective, we would like to use some, some sort of front end, just easier like interface. For example, Kibana is pretty good. And then yeah. we want like something like hypothesis that we can use. But then we want to get that data yeah. to the back end as well. So I we mean, like this, this, this whole scheme, I mean, like I, I closed this, but the whole scheme is, I mean, I would like to integrate uh, under this umbrella also other teams. Like depending on your needs, you just pick up either certain tools or a center, uh, a different type of, of front end uh, tool and you do whatever you want. And yeah. Yeah, and I think that was because there were okay. I need just to like to sit down with a pen and paper once again, and those questions that uh, Slava and 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 Alex and uh, Dylan uh, had now. It's like very for me. It's very important because actually I don't have much experience with it, and I need to find answers or people who can find answers. Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe maybe next meeting we should um like see it feels like there's two to three very specific points that just came up. Yeah. And we need to tackle them one at a time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like those instead of and keep and keep and keep it because there was a lot of, you know, just everybody has different things they're thinking about. So there's people, you know, there's discussion bleeds back to the thing you're most interested in. So let's just knock make sure that they're not getting mixed up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're definitely cool. right. Well, thanks, Lucas. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, Dylan, like, it was a really great point, of the last one. I think eventually we will, like, after we'll nail this down in terms of, again, domain-specific sub-teams, I mean, right now, not sub-teams, the teams of two, three people, we will have all of those de very detail-oriented on that level. That's why there is absolutely no need to bring all of this stuff, you know, all the way to search engine, like, the whole team level and just kind of getting lost in all of this like smaller conversations so yeah you're absolutely correct yeah for sure and this team still you know it's pretty early days you know things are starting to get formalized a little bit but i wouldn't feel bad you know it's not a bad thing to have discussions where you just kind of talk about stuff for a half hour i feel like that's kind of that's yeah, how yeah, things sure. have happened that's how things have happened before you know we have a really like all over the place discussion for once or twice and then things get really formalized in one you know so <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like it's it's just I need time to like to to take stuff and uh, 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 yeah, I mean, like yeah, time, just time, uh, timing, timing, it's everything. Thanks for your work, Lukash. Yeah. yeah, I thank you. I mean, I appreciate.
Ben Bash. And the structure general makes sense, yeah. Like the the domain in front and back end. I can understand it. It's just probably just more details specific. Yeah, I mean like just it, it general that's what I said, this general scheme, like general yeah. idea. It doesn't mean that uh, there is no connection or that the, those divisions are solid and uh, right. it can, it, there will be no collaboration of integration of whatever between those domains. Mm -hmm. However, there are specific, there are things that like, there was those problems that lie precisely in between. Yeah, exactly. Just okay. so you don't feel like everything was criticism, I do agree with the yeah, general sure. domain areas. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I mean, like, it was like, because I, I am quite, a, as a, in terms of personality, I, am, I like structures. So I like things that are somehow in, in some rectangles and not like a, a, an endless list of requirements and you don't have any hierarchy. And it's everything is uh, at the same time and at the same level. And of course, it's not the case. I mean, you need somehow to, to put it in order in different bins. Yeah. Good, okay. good first step towards like a scalable infrastructure, so. Yeah. Okay, I mean, uh, I think we can we can close it. I mean, like, uh, do you have still some questions or something that? Okay, then uh, have a nice day or a nice evening or night, depending on your time zone. And thank you very much. And we will see uh, each other next time, uh, the same place, the same uh, time. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Lucas. Have a good day, guys. Thank you. Have a good day.